Hey everyone, I'm Amir Adibi of PatentLawyer.io, and today I'm going to discuss Checkpoint Systems vs. Alltag Security, decided by the Federal Circuit on June 5, 2017. This is a fee-shifting case where the Federal Circuit reversed a district court's grant of fees to the prevailing defendant, Alltag. The district court found the case to be exceptional and awarded attorney fees to Alltag in the amount of $6.6 .6 million. The Federal Circuit reversed the attorney fees holding that the infringement suit was unreasonable and not brought in bad faith or with abusive tactics. This case has great language if you are defending a motion for fees in district court, especially in the post-octane world. For example, the court states in the opinion that, quote, the patent law provides the statutory right to exclude those that infringe a patented invention. Enforcement of the right is not an exceptional case under the patent law. The Federal Circuit also states that, quote, motivation to implement the statutory patent right by bringing suit based on a reasonable belief in infringement is not an improper motive. Now, this case has a thick procedural history. This is the third appeal arising from the suit brought by Checkpoint and the second attorney fee appeal. I'm going to briefly summarize and not delve too deeply into the procedural history of this case. The patent at issue in this case is patent number 4876555. The 555 patent relates to anti-theft tags that are attached to merchandise and then deactivated after the goods are purchased. Alltag manufactures the tags in Europe and imports them into the US. Checkpoint brought an infringement suit in the Eastern District of Pennsylvania. The case was tried before a jury who found the 555 patent not infringed, invalid, and unenforceable. The district court found the case to be exceptional under Section 285 and awarded defendants approximately $6.6 .6 in fees. The district court stated the case was exceptional because Checkpoint's expert based his infringement opinion on examination of imported tags manufactured by Alltag in Switzerland although the accused tags were actually manufactured by Alltag in Belgium. Checkpoint appealed to the Federal Circuit, showing evidence that the Belgian tags were manufactured with the same machine as the Swiss tags. The Federal Circuit reversed the attorney fee award, finding the infringement charges were not made in bad faith. Alltag successfully sought cert. Supreme Court ended up remanding to the Federal Circuit, which in turn remanded to the District Court for further consideration in light of the Supreme Court's decision in Octane Fitness. The District Court again held the case to be exceptional, citing the same ground of Checkpoint's pre-suit investigation being inadequate because Checkpoint's expert examined tags that were produced in Switzerland rather than those produced in Belgium. In addition, the district court found pre-suit opinions to be inadequate because they were, were performed years before filing the district court case. The district court also found Checkpoint had improper motivation as attempting to interfere with Alltag's business and to protect its own competitive advantage. Checkpoint appealed, arguing its expert proceeded reasonably because it was never disputed that the tags tested by the expert were produced on the same machines that were transferred to Belgium, and also arguing that they had a good faith basis for bringing the infringement suit. The Federal Circuit agreed with Checkpoint and reversed the award of attorney fees under Section 285. Next, let's discuss the court's analysis and reasoning. Section 285 provides for the award of attorney fees in exceptional cases. In Octane Fitness, the Supreme Court held that fee awards are for the rare case in which a party's unreasonable conduct, while not necessarily independently sanctionable, is nonetheless so exceptional as to justify an award of fees. According to the Supreme Court, an exceptional case is one that stands out from others with respect to the substantive strength of a party's litigating position, or 
the unreasonable manner in which the case was litigated. These under Section 285 are reviewed under the abuse of discretion standard. A district court abuses its discretion when it bases its ruling on an erroneous view of the law or a clearly erroneous assessment of the evidence. The district court found the case exceptional here because of Checkpoint's motivation in bringing the lawsuit, finding that the pre-suit investigation was inadequate, and a failure of Checkpoint's expert to identify and examine the correct product. First, let's discuss the improper motivation issue. The district court stated that Checkpoint brought suit to interfere improperly with Altag's business and to protect its own competitive advantage. The Federal Circuit came out and flatly said that this is not an improper motivation. The Federal Circuit stated that the patent law provides the statutory right to exclude those that infringe a patent and that enforcement of a patent is not an exceptional case. The opinion points out that in Octane, the Supreme Court said that motivation should be considered. In SFA v. Newegg, the Federal Circuit said that motivation to harass or burden an opponent may be relevant to an exceptional case finding. But the Federal Circuit stated that motivation to implement the statutory patent right by bringing suit based on a reasonable belief in infringement is not an improper motive. A patentee's assertion of reasonable claims of infringement is the mechanism whereby patent systems provide an innovation incentive. The Federal Circuit noted that Checkpoint 2 pre-suit opinions and obtained judgments against Altag for infringement of the Swiss counterpart patent. Checkpoint also survived summary judgment motions and a Daubert challenge and made it all the way to a jury. Now let's address the pre-suit investigation issue. The district court also found the case exceptional because the expert did not test the correct accused product. As explained earlier, Checkpoint's expert examined tags produced in Switzerland, but the accused tags were made by Altag in Switzerland. The Belgian tags were, however, manufactured on the same machines as the Swiss tags. The Federal Circuit noted the district court denied Altag's motion to exclude Checkpoint's expert testimony and motion for judgment as a matter of law post-trial. The Federal Circuit did not find any falsity, fraud, or bad faith. Altag's expert even testified that Altag's patents explained the process by which the accused tags were produced. The Federal Circuit reiterated that the legislative purpose behind Section 285 is to prevent a party from suffering a gross injustice. The Federal Circuit reversed the award of fees under Section 285 because the record showed the charge of infringement was reasonable and did not find any bad faith or abusive tactics. Like I said before, this case is full of great language if you are defending a motion for fees post-octane. Please argue the merits of the case in the comments section below. The opening brief, the answer brief, and the reply brief are also available for download in the links below. Please submit your comments and thank you for watching.